Hey everyone, my name is Ru and we're here and this is going to be the first bit of anything that I've done in Generation 9 and uh, it's really weird kind of being in this space, especially having been 10 months since uploading anything, but I've been doing a whole lot of stuff and not all of it's been Pokemon related. I'm going to spend a couple minutes on kind of where I've been, but if you just want to get to right to the battle, I mean, there's going to be a timestamp and you can go ahead and go there. That's totally fine. But for right now, in terms of where I've been kind of in the Pokemon space, there's kind of a short term and a long term answer to that. Honestly, the short term answer is pretty dang simple. I have been miserably sick and it's been really tough for me but not long ago I was in Orlando Florida for regionals and since then it's just been really one thing after the other I've been kind of sick three times like one after the other and it's been tough because every time I felt like I was getting better it would just be something else and it felt like three things just kind of like hitting me all at the same time and it didn't feel great but even beyond it just not feeling great in general like physically I think the toughest part of it was just kind of having this thing that was sucking my motivation for like two to three months straight it was really quite rough but it was literally just one thing after the other after the other and then as I kind of start to see a light at the end of that tunnel my mother's actually had two surgeries in the past two weeks it's just been a lot going on in the short term but honestly a lot of that just boils down to being a meat puppet sucks having to live inside a fucking bag of meat just sucks right and honestly even beyond just feeling better I'm kind of slowly getting motivation back even then man I start to look at how much of a backlog I have and how many things I have to get done and how many things I want to do it gets intimidating all over again so be patient with me it's gonna take a while and honestly getting back motivation is going to be its own kind of journey but I feel good I feel I feel a lot better obviously both physically and kind of mentally but honestly my voice isn't entirely back yet and I'm still pretty self-conscious about that as well uh, I feel like my voice is not where it needs to be for me to be doing this again but uh let me know if it's super distracting. But being in the right mental space has taken a lot of time as well. So, okay, then there's a longer term question of why I haven't done anything in the past 10 months. And the truth is, I've done a good number of stuff, just not upload required, just really low key side projects where that wasn't really the focus, right? So, shortly after the last set of uploads ended, I did actually end up joining the UPPA non upload division, which I ended up becoming the champion for. And that's its own run. I have all the battles recorded, but I never did anything with them. And now it's Gen 9, so Gen eight footage is pretty much useless so i guess that's never gonna see the light of day but you gotta trust me i became the champion it's it's written somewhere apparently i think we ended up taking part in the draft league world cup and that was a ton of fun uh it was a really insane experience right so that's showdown that's level 100 all the things that i'm kind of self-conscious about in this space but somehow we ended up doing pretty dang well we ended up losing in the top four so we are in the top four of the entire draft league world cup it was a really crazy just roller coaster experience but there was just so much happening i played against some incredible players but yeah we played in the world cup and we were in the top four uh, but even then aside from pokemon right part of my extended leave of absence was kind of me focusing more on photography and just doing a lot more in that space right pokemon has always been a ton of fun it's always kind of been at the periphery even as i focused on other things i just gotta be honest it was just not taking a priority in a way that it has over a lot of the past couple years and even now as i'm dipping my toe back into pokemon right i'm still trying to find a balance where i still want there's still so much that i want to do in in the photography space and so much that i want to do in the pokemon space where i'm still trying to learn how to balance it out right i remember i was trying to fix my draft while i was literally trying trying to pick up a model from a train station to bring her to a studio so that we can do a photo shoot and I'm literally like on my phone trying to draft while I have this woman in the changing room and she's about to come out or about to start shooting and it's been a whole lot of different things happening at once but hopefully it's something that I can manage it's something that I really want to manage and honestly these are spaces that I both feel really good in right I feel like I'm at the top of my game Pokemon wise I feel like I'm at the top of my game photography wise and I really and these are two spaces that I want to be in so it's going to continue to be kind of a balancing match but um we'll see how it goes it's definitely something that i want to uh figure out as i continue on but now that brings us here right we're we've been invited to pack the pokemon all-star competition and honestly it was on the back of a lot of those kind of late in the generation accomplishments like the world cup and taking a championship late in the gen but we're here now we drafted a team that i think is phenomenal i think honestly it's one of the best teams that i've ever drafted and as this is happening right i do have a non-upload required league that that uh is about to be over i I said only because we're pretty deep in the playoffs um we do spoiler alert have a pretty deep playoff run happening and uh, i would love to kind of get that footage all together and at the same time we do have a semi upload required league that will be coming out sooner than later but that's going to be more of a 
full season kind of like recap type of thing that's going to be exciting to kind of put together so we have these three things kind of happening all at the same time right it turns out my week one pack opponent is going to be Mounte, who's widely regarded as one of the best players in the past gen and i have to admit i'm incredibly intimidated his team is great and not only is his team great but it kind of directly clashes with mine in ways that i'm really not sure if i can manage well but i mean we're gonna do our best right and with that i think that's honestly most of what i wanted to get out there so i think we might go right in a team preview oh actually you know what i started wearing glasses too i don't even i'm still very self-conscious about how i look in glasses i have contacts in now but yeah i might show up in glasses sometimes which is gonna be weird for me too i haven't worn glasses in just about two decades and i'm still very self-conscious about it still it feels new to me even though i wore glasses for a very very long time when i was a kid but yeah now with that we're gonna get into it so i'm probably not gonna end up doing a full roster breakdown but you can see a lot of my team here and honestly like i said i think this is one of the best drafts that i've ever put together i think honestly are the best top four in the entire league and everything else is kind of just like other pieces that are going to support that right so one mod that i didn't bring which was my second pick was a rotom wash so my first four picks i believe were Miascarada, Rotom Wash, uh, Iron Hands, and Armor Rouge. And I think those are some of the best top four I, I can ask for. I picked up Lucario a little bit later, and Lucario can honestly kind of slip in there pretty in interchangeably. But I think that top four or five can go head to head with anybody else. And I think past that, all I really need is a couple of pieces here and there to kind of support those. And I think my team has an incredibly high ceiling. And it's just going to be up to me to you know get it to that ceiling, right? And we are here against the Mounte team. You can see here he has the Valiant, the Tinkaton, the Serena, the Crocodile, the Skeledurge, and the Ursaring. Now, I expected most of this. The Skeledurge gives me a ton of trouble in this matchup. But the biggest thing that surprised me here was the lack of a Lycanroc Dusk. I feel like Mounte loves Lycanroc Dusk, and it was really surprising not to see it here. And I was a little bit surprised not to see the Oracorio. It does have the Electric Oracorio. And those are pretty much the only pieces that I really, really thought had a good chance of coming. Ticketon, I didn't expect at all. Uh, Serena was maybe a 50-50, but I thought he had, like I said, those two better options there. Everything else here is pretty much spot on what I thought he'd bring and a couple things about how this team is kind of constructed together uh, you're gonna see Avalug a lot because Avalug is my only real form of removal consistently that's because when I really was looking at removal heavy that was the round when everybody took removal so so much removal just went back to back to back and I had nothing left I thought Avalug is uh, could be a, a solid piece here um, but honestly it's it's it's, it's really surprised me uh, as the season's gone on and we can figure out together for good or for bad and cloister was one that i didn't expect to want to draft but kind of randy cloister pilled me a bit and one thing in particular that they do saw me is that honestly cloister can just come as a lead shell smash on one and, and and kind of put you in a good position in most games so i decided to kind of put that to the test in week one right like why not so that's kind of what i went for here also cloister is one of my terra captains so in this particular matchup i thought terra ground would be the best here because if like rock dust tries to come in and excel rock me i'm going to resist that and cloister's defense is so naturally good that even at minus one after a shell smash i'm still going to resist it and be able to, to kind of hit it back in ways that are going to make sense for this overall matchup right now realistically i maybe should have been clear amulet here because of the crocodile but it was just something that i was going to try to risk see what i see what else i can do here my other terror captain possibility is going to be the armor rouge and it's going to be kind of a secondary terra in case cloister doesn't but i kind of expected cloister going into this matchup to have to terror in order to take on things everything else i can get into as the battle goes on so let's get into it so here we are and um I, 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 and like i said i believe i just lead off with a cloister as he leads off with a serena now um this is the first time mountain i have ever played but i've watched a lot of mountain content right and uh just the way that i felt this happening here i didn't feel like he would go straight off and try to hit my cloister right away right I thought that I was safe here to just click shell smash and try to live another turn, right? I was right about that. He goes for the U-turn, plays it uh, very cautiously, which is exactly what I thought here, right? But I don't really know what to expect here. Uh, Cloyster deals with a lot of the team very well, but because there's no Lycanroc, I really didn't know what to expect. Out comes the Tinkaton, right? Which, in retrospect, probably should have made more sense to me, but... but Tinkaton was such an afterthought in my entire team building process that I really didn't uh, know how to try to manage this Tinkaton in the moment, right? So my only real thought here was, well, let's try to hit this thing. And uh, it looks like my best move to hit is going to be the Liquidation. Um, I, I maybe should have been Waterfall in this slot, but it does have a chance to, to flinch because of the... Uh, 
because of the Haynes Rocks, so I can potentially get it to defense drop and a flinch, but uh, it's not likely here. So the way that he brought it in is probably super physically defensive. However, Cloyster, if, if it is physically defensive, Cloyster's defense is still naturally good enough, even at mi minus one, where I don't think he's going to have a super effective hit to hit me with, and I'm, the chances are good, I'm thinking here in this moment, that uh, I will be able to that I will be able to uh, get a couple hits off here and be relatively fine. Turns out to be Rocket Helmet, so it's already making me, it's already making this in interaction not great. And he goes for the Thunder Wave. And immediately I start thinking things like, man, should I just shell smash again? I already got the damage on Tinkaton. Is it really gonna be like that, that much better for me? Um, oh, one other thing that I, that I forgot to mention was um, one of the biggest, uh, Things with this cloister, especially after seeing no like in a rock. But even in, but even in my, my original thinking, right? I was thinking if I see the like in a rock, and I'm able to, to take it out. My my next biggest goal for this cloister, yeah. He, here I'm really thinking about uh, going for another shell smash. Um, if the if the like in rock threat is dealt with, one of my biggest goals for this cloister is going to be uh to force the to force the Skeletor to tear early because that's one of his terror options and I know he's going to want to try to try to come into it maybe he has a a, a, a resist in terms of uh, what his terror type is going to be but it's going to make the rest of the smash so much easier if I know what terror he's going to be so that the rest of my team can manage it accordingly and and um, I really am trying to lean on armorers to kind of clean up this this later game uh, which is part of the reason why I need like a rock out of the way which obviously not here but also one of the biggest reasons why um why i need this cellars to terra as, as early as i can push it to so that our merge can do more damage later on in the game and i can kind of um hit his team hard with, with the armor rouge whether or not i terra so we can come in a new turn um and i get a chance to to kind of react to him here which is going to be good for me things are goes into the valley right so Valiant's gonna make things really scary for me. I don't have much that that kind of scares it out off rip. Uh, I believe, if I remember right, I go into Armor Rouge here because our Armor Rouge, at the very least, um, puts on the most pressure and forces and potentially forces it. No, I go into this thing. All right, so so theoretically, Meowskarada is faster, and Meowskarada. Um, Ken Oko with a flower trick, but it's a super uh, dicey roll. So I believe what I decide to do here is is click U-turn to at least get some chip damage on. Um, I, I think I did that to, to check if it was like booster energy, but I don't think booster energy shows on the, shows on the summary. So it was a moot point anyway. I needed chip damage. I felt like because the because the roll was way too tenuous. So if it is just max max and and it I am able to kind of deal with it better i don't want to take any chances here on this turn and i feel like i like i'm in a position where i can kind of take a risk here i think about going out into the avalug but i think about it uh, for for another second more i think well yeah of course it's gonna go for a moon blast right in the situation that's that's what it's gonna um want to do more than anything but drops my special attack which honestly felt crummy in the moment because uh now this makes this interaction a lot more tenuous, right? But he's also, I can also see that it's not gonna be a two hit for him and this does allow my arm rouge to, to Terra, which is going to kind of shore, reshore up this calc, but um, I would have preferred not to have to reveal quite so much this, this early on. However, this does give me a chance to be able to Terra here. And at least kind of spread damage on the team, right? Armor is really felt like every time it comes in, it gets free damage, except on the Skeletor, which is bad for me, admittedly. But uh, like I said, as long as I can kind of force the armor to do something, or force the uh, Skeletor to do something that it doesn't want to do early on, then I can kind of manage this better. We do see how much damage I do to the Crocodile, and I decide immediately, like frame one, that this thing is, is, uh, Assault vest. Now, to be fair, 
Uh, that was me at minus one special attack. So I guess, honestly, uh, it looks like if I wasn't, then that would have been a clean two hit onto a potential AV crook, which would have been pretty dope. That didn't even register to me like in the game. I was just like, well, it's AV anyway, so 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 whatever. But but yeah, uh, I didn't even put two and two together that that was because of the special attack drop. However, um. I'm able to, to kind of pivot here. This is going to kind of be like a catch-all pivot, especially if this thing wants to go for rocks, but pulls a double here. I think he knew uh, that I was going out into this thing. Yeah, it, he 100% knew because he goes into Skeletorge. This does not look great for me. I think I just ch check my check my moveset just, just to check, but this is very not good, right? But again, I'm still in the position where my main goal is going to be to force it to Terra, right? And in my head, I'm also thinking, well, I theoretically have a Flash Fire, Terra Fire, Armor Rouge with Armor Cannon. So clearly he has to go for Shadow Ball. He can't really afford to go for the Fire Stab which I was correct about. I'm able to, to, to go into the Masquerada, eat a crit, and take a special defense drop, which is what it is. But this was always planned for here because the Skeletor was so bad for my team. So so this is, in my mind, a phenomenal moment for me, right? Because this accomplishes so many of my goals here. I, I, I trick a band onto the Skeletor Urge, so, it's, so it can't um, just, just sit in front of me all day. And, and I... I force it to to Terra into into Fairy, as I become a Psychic type too, so I'm not weak to his stabs anymore. And uh, and again, this feels like a phenomenal turn for me. However, I st I very much still understand how um how much of an uphill battle this Elder just still going to be because I still. Uh, don't have any damage on it. I still don't really have a distinct plan of how to deal with a Terra Fairy. Skeleturge. Um, but in my head, I'm thinking just get some damage off it while, while you can. You can give up the, the Masquerada, and it's done more than enough for this interaction, especially, right? I feel like I'm in a good place with uh, where this looks, and I'm in a position to, to kind of give up where I need to, right? Goes for a Terra Blast, and um, that's going to knock me out. And this is going to be a little bit of a fun interaction here. Because now I can go into whatever I want, but nothing that I have deals with uh, this Skeletor particularly well. So uh, I'm I'm honestly at a loss here. I can tell I, I'm I'm at a loss here of what I want to go into. My Lucario doesn't have a steel move on it, uh, other than um, what's what's that move? Um, Bullet Punch. But I go into. Lucario anyway because much like turn one where where I knew he would want to click u-turn here Mounty felt to, felt to me like too cautious of a player to not at least respect the potential for me to have me me meter mash even though I believe um, he, he told me af after the match like he knew that I had no reason to to really have meteor mash against his team in the first place so I kind of wanted to take advantage of that a little bit here. I knew that he was going to switch out. I think I clicked Sources on this turn, which is bold of me, but I felt like I had to be bold in this moment, right? If there was ever a moment to, to try to be bold, it was this moment. S especially again, because I struck, I cannot overstate just how much I struggle against the Skeletor. So he finally withdraws and uh, goes out into Serena. So this is not great for me because, uh, well, no, okay. So to be fair, I, I, I didn't know that this wasn't great for me yet. It, I, did, I never clocked in my head that this thing uh, has the potential to be scarfed. I figure, okay, this was mostly a sack, right? Because I can just uh, go for a close combat and get the KO. But Mounte goes for a scarfed high jump kick and misses and lets me get the KO on Serena. Now, honestly, I didn't realize... It didn't really sink in in this moment just how much the rest of my team doesn't do great against Serena, or at the very least, Serena forces me to give up a lot of damage on my team. But this miss was huge. It, it, like, there's no way around it, right? This this miss meant a lot for how the game progresses, right? Even when I played this in, in the first place, my heart kind of sank a little bit when I did see that high jump kick, even like the text go up on the screen. But then when I saw it miss, Oh, it was it, it was a roller coaster, right? And maybe I should have just gone for the close combat. Although I don't think close combat just cleanly KOs anyway. I feel so good about this, right? Uh, because all that's left in the back is an Ursa Ring, which plus two close combat is going to do a lot of damage. Uh, the Skeletor, which I can get a lot of damage on, and um, the Valiant, which goes down to a plus two. I switch out into the Armor Rouge, which uh, I, I didn't expect to see. Uh, I go out into the Armor Rouge. 
thinking that I can maybe force something. But he saw that coming a mile away. He saw that coming a mile away and, and goes for the Shadow Ball. Which is hilarious because it gave me very, very free damage onto the Skeletor if I wanted to take it. But it does put me in a position where I can go for an Armor Cannon and... This this roll was a little bit more tenuous than I originally gave it gave it credit for being. I probably the pro, the best course of action probably would have been to stay in and just click bullet punch. And even if I go even if I decide to go out into the armor rouge um, after that turn, having that amount of chip damage would have been uh, pretty huge and probably would have been the best course of action here if I was to play this over again. I, that's probably what I do, but uh, we're not in that world, right? Honestly, we're both in a post HK miss world and so i think we're both kind of flustered in this moment right because i'm the crocodile and i think i switched out in this moment because uh i think that that roll for how much i did er earlier in the game was still like in the back of my head which it shouldn't have been because like i was saying before my armor reach was at minus one in that moment so i probably should have I, pr I probably worried a little bit too much about this interaction but I'm, I'm taking a look at what the rest of the team kind of looks like and just just knowing that this crocodile is probably av and just how defensive it, it is i think i do decide that avalug is super solid here so i am able to go out in, into the avalug and in this position i'm i not expecting this crocodile to really do a ton of damage to me and this armor rouge is still going to be super important for how i want to close this game out so as long as i get just a little bit more chip damage onto this crocodile then i am in a much much better position goes for an eq and i was shocked at how well uh avalog took that hit avalog is a real champ right i've never used an avalog and uh it just blew me away in that moment right Go over here and in my head i'm thinking i probably should recover because it gets me back up to 30 just in case i have to be able to hit okay never mind then what i was gonna say was uh i i, I do want to at least be able to get a hit off on the on the uh, Iron Valiant, if necessary, and and getting my sturdy back up can be huge for that overall. But apparently, I don't care about that, right? And I can go back out. I pull an aggressive double, thinking that he would pull an aggressive double back out into the Iron Valiant. But instead, uh, now I'm in this position, and I really need to get a lot of damage off on the Star because I really don't want to give it turns to 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 set up like things like a sword stance get its flame orb do just things that i don't want it to do right so it sucks because i knew i had to give up armor which i which i really wanted to be what cleans up the rest of this game but uh i knew in my head that uh, once he made that th that decision it wasn't going to be how this game ends so i made the tough decision I'm able to do something. I, uh, what, what do I do here? Now, now that it's post Trailblaze, it actually outspeeds the rest of my team. Or, yeah, it outspeeds everything on my team. So, that's not the route that I really want to go here. However, uh, again, after seeing how much damage I took from that Crocodile, it really makes me start to feel good. Oh, especially after seeing the No Flame Orb and even kind of... I think I did run a Calc or two while I was kind of waiting here and trying to see how well I can take a hit. And here I'm thinking more about longevity. But he goes for Swords Dance, which is super duper scary here. Uh, I'm not. Yeah, this recover feels a bit sus, but maybe I just wanted to get back out to full. I don't know. I don't know. Again, in retrospect, feels kind of sus, but we're here now. And uh, we just go for for body press as the thing goes for facade but it's not burned and uh ev and even if it was burned i think it would only do about 50 per ish percent and we can get a pretty solid ko here with body press and uh that makes me feel so much better because the uh the ursa ring was going to be such a potential problem for me now this thing comes out and i'm really thinking about how i want to manage this um, because obviously you can see that, that I do have a Roselli Berry on my, on my guy here, my Iron Hands. And I'm going through my options here and I'm thinking, am I really going to do this? Because, uh, this feels not optimal. This feels not good and not optimal and like not something that I wanted to do, but I end up doing it. Eventually I pull the trigger on this. Um, what I decided was the best course of action here is to go into Lucario 
I can give up my Lucario because I know I'm going to get Oko'd by a good Moonblast here. And uh, what that's going to allow me to do is go out into my Iron Hand with, uh, with a which with a Roselli Berry is going to be able to um, potentially take a Moonblast unless it is a super specs crit kind of deal. Get a KO with, with Heavy Slam and then uh, get me in, in a best position to win. This Iron Hands, uh, I really, I mean, I, obviously a lot happened in this game, but I really wanted this Iron Hands to do a lot here. But if all it does is just one for one on this Valiant, then I feel fantastic about this interaction. I feel fan fantastic about this interaction. And now it's just back down to the Crocodile, which is, which I believe is AV. Uh, and I have no special attackers left, which is fun. Um, but I know how, how weak it is, and to be honest, I'm, I'm kind of feeling myself a little bit here, and I and I feel like I see the light, the light at the end of the tunnel, and it's probably not an optimal play here, that I, but I decide to go hard out into uh, the coffee table, which uh, is not great because potentially he could, he could like crit CC twice, and maybe that, that like gets him there. But, he goes for the Q, and that does, I, that did like literally 11 points of damage, right? I think that was 11 points of damage, that's crazy. Um, I was blown away at how well Avalog took these hits, and how much of, how much of a stabilizing force as Avalog was, because uh, Mounte really did build bulky, he built uh, some like sturdy bulky boys, but, but not ones that could hit back well, so, so... The KOs that Avalog here, that Avalog took here, were the Crook and um, I believe the, the Ursaring, and those are Mons that could have sunk me if they if they were like more offensive, if they were um, really out for blood. But but having built them so so boldly, uh, Avalog just chewed them up, man. I was really impressed by Avalog, right? And now Avalog. Is my KO leader. Avalog has two, picked up two in this in this week one game, and Avalog to the moon right now. Right, I, I feel great about it. If if uh, I've never used a mon before, and um, it just felt great in the moment, right? But we're here. Uh, that's gonna be our week one game. It uh, was very intense. We finally got our 60 minute timers back as well, so that's been an experience that is in on its own. Obviously, this game had a lot to do with missing that high jump kick, um, but. Like I said, I still think we have some of the best pieces out here in this in this league, and uh, I'm gonna try to continue to build out those pieces and really try to turn it into something that works out well here. But but with that, that's gonna be week one of pack. That's gonna be our big Gen Nine return to playing Pokemon, right? And uh, trying to have fun in this space. We will have more weeks of pack to come in the very very near future, as well as uh, other stuff to come as well, but with that, once again, thank you guys so much for watching, and once again, out.